Hi, my name is Lindsay, and I'm going to go ahead and be jumping right into my individual analysis for three students for my module lot nine uh, portion of this class. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in, like I said. And just for clarification, I have split these students up into a student A, student B, and student C, um, just for clarity. So. Um, I'm going to be starting with student A, and this student, just for some background knowledge, has um, the lower reading level, um, is two grades behind, um, below, or average content with mathematics, depending on the, the problems. Um, and so that's the background knowledge I have for the student. So when looking at that, my main concern was how is a student going to process the text that they're given for the word problems, because there are a lot of word portions of this budgeting, because I'm the budgeting lesson. Um, there's a lot of word processing going on here um, with explaining the background context of the lesson that they're, they're going to be doing, um, including like the directions, like just for example, in this handout, um, watching the video, um, the, the budgeting, um, the actual amount spent, all of this, all of this information is very important for them to keep track of how they're going to budget for this date um, and everything like that. So that was my worries. How are they going to transfer this information and grasp this information um, with the text that they're given if the text is not at their reading level that they may need. There was a few options that I considered. Um, one common option that I used to use um, is having a word bank that they can utilize, um, like say on a graphic organizer that they can refer back to that just has like some certain highlighted words that are important to remember like budgeting or um, you know, taking away more than less than just some reminder words that kind of just trigger that memory of what that is. Um, another option is possibly taking the text and changing it to making it at um, their to meet their reading level versus the reading level that is at. Um, I didn't find that this this most of the content that I found was pretty basic, but there are ways that this text could be changed. The one AT option that I really would highly consider that I've seen to be successful for students, also my little sister who has problem with, problems with word process content, and also myself, is the highlighting tool. Um, my easiest example of this will be during SOLs, like students can use a highlighting tool online. For me, I just want to show an example um, for student A, if say they are trying to focus on a certain word like budget they can just highlight the word, um, really look at it. Um, or, you know, during that, we've learned in the earlier grades on how to break down a word problem. Um, the teacher going over that with the student and having him highlight the very important words. Um, like I said, this is just an example, um, like non-original budget um, and other things just to show which words are going to be important for him to focus on and stand out. So that's my option for student A. Student B had the auditory um, limitations, and that's important to note because one part of this lesson is the fact that there is a video included um, with budgeting that gives background knowledge, and also where students have to sit and um, not only record which how much money is spent and all of that, um, but they really need to pay attention to it to help give them background knowledge. So therefore. My concern for this student and their math content focus was the fact that um, they needed to be able to process this auditory information, hear it, understand it before they can move forward. So there was a few options that I could consider. Um, one was offering this on a computer or laptop or um, or on an iPad where the student could use um, headphones to either listen, stop, rewind, use subtitles to just kind of analyze the video more closely, um, having earphones that can block out other knowledge to do that, having a level that might be better for him and maybe louder or quieter for students. Um, this could really help also with sensory. Um, that's just an idea. Also, Closed captions is a great idea that you can do through an iPad. And another option could even just be um, the script version. So if the student's at a good reading level, um, printing out, not good reading level, let me correct myself there. Um, if this student is at whatever this student's reading level is, um, you're going to want to print out the text version of this video and kind of having them have like an actual script of it to kind of look back and refer to, which may be helpful. And then my last one, student C, is a student who um, has trouble 
sorry, no, I don't like saying that, um, is, is meeting the needs of, this part is meeting the needs of the student who um, needs to organize his ideas, apply his problems that he has the basic, basic math concepts, and applying them into complex problems. So something that I feel is really important is organization for the student, um, just to keep track of, because there's a lot of budgeting, like we have this graph right here that like shows how you're gonna budget certain parts of the date. Um, hurricane, they do budgeting for Hurricane Katrina. Um, something that could be a struggle is finding the flaws in the budgeting and how how that happened and, and just kind of processing the decimal moving and everything like that. Um, so I thought manipulatives would be actually a good option for the student. I went back and forth about this, but I found it was really cool manipulatives. It's from mathlearning.com. Literally just Googled um, money virtual manipulatives and this came up. Um, I'm sure there's more complex things that might be used for this class, but um, this is just an example. These manipulatives, um, I can't move them obviously, but um, you can drag and drop the amount of money that you need. Um, I also love how it's it's arranged in, in, in these different you know, block forms just for visual need. Um, so this could help them kind of see how the budget works and, and just kind of putting together the big picture of, okay, I have this amount, there's this amount, where is the difference? So maybe having the manipulatives to compare and contrast would be able helpful for an organization of ideas. Another one I really like is, and I wish I had when or I thought of when I was in math, math was the Graph Master. Um, well, that's huge. Um, so this is just being able to um, graph kind of things and kind of looking at a chart with different things. Um, I don't really think there needs to be a chart for that, but I like the idea of having a AT option where they can graph what they're doing. So looking at this budget, um, being able to follow where things fall, where there might have been a mistake, just being able to organize their ideas is really important. Now, going back to the NCIT standards, there are a few things that I considered for each student. One thing that I found that was important through all students, though, that I want to point out is the organization of ideas. Um, that's something I feel like they all kind of need to focus on, also needs to be considered, but also if these AT options aren't given to them, this kind of affects their organization of ideas, processing, um, making calculation, and building conceptual understandings. But for each student, I did find there was individual NCIT um, matrix that could be applied. So for student A, let me just go back to this handout for highlighting, it's definitely um, converting text and understanding that into uh, mathematical terms. Um, that's why I suggested highlighting to kind of be able to have them focus on that converted version of text. Um, for the video, um, I really think the whole um, you know, organizing ideas, having that co conceptual, um, building conceptual understanding um, cannot be met if they are not able to be given that option of auditory um, to kind of be able to read the text and process it. And then lastly, for the manipulatives, for the third one, for student C, um, I think um, he has the basic understandings, but organizing those ideas, just like I said for every student, um, making calculations from his basic concepts, and then building off of those understandings. So taking, you know, the bare bones and building off of that. Thank you so much, and I hope you appreciate this video.